Hello, I'm Lauda Smith for Modern Wall Street and here on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange joining me again is Stephen Guilfoyle. Stephen, welcome. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Now, it, we really need to start with those Mets. What a game last night off to the playoffs as you forecast almost they would be. Who are they going to be up against next week? I guess it'll be the Kansas City Royals. They seem to be the better team in the American League. They do frighten me a little bit. But the way they're playing, the way Daniel Murphy's playing, I'm starting to become confident. Okay, well, we are on the floor, so let's get to those <laughs> markets. You also forecast China GDP wouldn't be really that much of a market mover. Were you surprised by the figure that we got earlier this week? Not really. I mean, it came in a little below 7%, but it did beat expectations, which we're not really sure how trustworthy those numbers are. So the fact that it did come in at a comfortable number for China isn't really a surprise. And I think the markets took it in stride. You see the Chinese markets have moved around a little this week, but nothing great. They had a 3% sell-off followed by a rally today. I, I don't think that it was really the market mover that it could have been. Okay, we have had some market movers on the company front here um, in the US. Even McDonald's today surprising on the upside with its results. What do you think about the, that result? Are you a believer in it or would you just prefer to be eating their burgers? Maybe neither. Well, I do like their food. Uh, their revenue was lower than last year, and it's been receding on a regular basis, but they did comfortably exceed expectations. And in this era of low interest rates and easy monetary policy, that's really all it takes. And as you can see today, this stock is off to the races. It's back to levels I don't think it was even at before it sold off a few months back. This, this stock's do, doing very nicely today. Stephen, you mentioned races. We had, of course, about $25 million worth of cars, Ferrari, parked outside of the New York Stock Exchange yesterday. Again, would you prefer to be driving away in one of those, or might you be investing in the company instead? You know... I don't think I know enough about luxury cars to invest, so I think I'll just drive away in the car, maybe watch an old Magnum PI video, something like that. That'll be, that's good enough for me when it comes to Ferrari. Fantastic. And looking ahead, we've got a very busy week. Again, uh, hundreds of companies reporting. Also, the FOMC decision, what are you really going to be paying attention for uh, next week? Well, you know, the individual companies are always important, and you, you don't have to pick a direction. You can play a straddle, you can play a strangle, you can play volatility in these names if you think the volatility will, at, will be large enough to overcome the cost of the premiums. Uh, as far as the macro and the FOMC, that, that's a big fish. You know, we had the ECB this morning, and the ECB certainly moved European markets to see what the equities did over there. You saw that what the debt instruments did over there. We're getting a little bit of a pop here in equities, pretty much because of how well Mario Draghi addresses the public. I don't think our speakers address the public nearly as well, and we'll have to see how that plays out. Okay, so I'm going to ask one more product, uh, prediction before we leave, and that is next week's interest rate decision. What are we likely to see, and how is that going to impact markets? Uh, they will not raise interest rates next week. They may not even raise them in December, and it will not impact the marketplace. Wow, some very strong predictions there. Looking forward to touching base again with you next week. Thank you very much, Stephen Gilfoyle. Thank you for having me.